Welcome to worship at St. John's United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you have joined us today in worship. Just a few things before we get started. We are joining with several local congregations to pray for our schools. So on September 13th at two o'clock, which is a Sunday, we, will, we as St. John's will be gathering at Levi Fry to pray for that school together. And other churches will be meeting at other schools and praying at that time as well. Please put that on your calendar and join us on September 13th at 2 o'clock. Also, we have these awesome signs that you can put in your yard to show that you are praying and that you are supporting the schools and our students and teachers and administrators and all those um, throughout the school year. These signs are a $5 donation, and you can pick them up here at St. John's. Also, Fusion started this past week on Thursday. It was just an introduction, so if you would like to still join, you can do that. The Zoom email invitation goes out every week, so all you have to do is click on that link. We are meeting on Thursdays at 6 o'clock. That is all the announcements that I have for you, so let's get started. Let's turn our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength to worship God. All right. Good morning, St. John's family. This is uh, a hymn from the United Methodist hymnal, He Touched Me. And now we'll move on to a time of offering in prayer. Uh, some of you may already know, but this has been a week of giving generously at our church. We have sent two loads, two trailer loads of relief supplies to Orange, Texas. Um, the first relief supply trailer were left full of 450 plus gallons of water uh, for Orange, and then we also filled another trailer with uh, supplies to send to the people of Orange. Uh, many of us have been affected by hurricanes here where we have lived, and it is such a, a, a wonderful privilege and honor that we can uh, return the favor to people who have been so supportive of us in our time of need. 
And so thank you so much for the many ways that you've been generous this week with your hurricane relief supplies and with your donations and also with your financial resources for the church. We really appreciate the way that you have generously given to support the ministries of this church in whatever way you've done that. So now let's turn to a time of prayer. Loving God, we are so grateful to come to this time of worship, a time when we can come to you just as we are. We come with our joys and our sorrows. We come with our pain and our grief. We come distracted. We come with successes and with failures this week. We come with anxious and impatient hearts. Oh God, just settle us down so that your peace surrounds us. So that we can set aside our burdens and fully invest ourselves in this time with you. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear. And fill our hearts with a desire for you and you alone. Come Holy Spirit, be with us as we listen and pray. And God of hope, we lift up the people who have had their lives turned upside down by this hurricane. Send them the help that they need to restore their homes and their hearts and their hope. Pour out your peace and comfort them. We ask that you protect those who are clearing the trees and cleaning up the debris and repairing the electric lines and keeping the peace. God, bless our efforts to, to send some supplies and some relief to show how much we care. We are so grateful for a chance to give generously to those who have been so devastated by this hurricane. For God, we are able to be generous for others because you have been so generous with us. We are grateful for your, gra for your grace and for your mercy for giving us what we don't deserve and for not giving us what we do deserve. We're grateful for the gift of Christ who opened the way to the abundant life that we have with you in this kingdom. And we know that you are quick, quick to love and quick to forgive. Teach us how to do the same thing with other people. Bring to our minds what it feels like to have that burden of jet forgiven and the freedom that comes with that gift and make us generous with our own forgiveness so that we might forgive ourselves and forgive others who have hurt us and help us to see that forgiveness just opens the door to transformed lives merciful god make us instruments of your reconciliation in this world and then, gracious God, we ask that you stay by our side as we live into the rest of this day and this week. Be with those who are suffering from the effects of this pandemic, and be with those who are working to put an end to it. Pour out your healing presence on those who are ill, and surround those who grieve with your peace. We lift up the names of the people who are in this, in, listed in our bulletin today, and know that you are already at work in every one of those situations. Bless our offerings and our tithes that we give today and that we give throughout the week. May they flow through the ministries of this church and the United Methodist Church so that all may come to know the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And now we place our trust and our confidence in you, God, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Our reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, from Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. May the word of God fall afresh on your ears this day. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we talk about forgiveness, we all know that forgiveness is hard. Whether we're talking about forgiving small things or large things. We also each understand what it means to be forgiven. I certainly understand what it means to be forgiven. As a kid, when I did something wrong and I was forgiven instead of receiving a punishment, it was like this great relief. Because as a kid, I knew when I stepped out of bounds and I did something wrong. And I knew that I deserved to be punished. But when grace came and punishment didn't, it was like this huge relief. And even as an adult, when I know that I've messed up, and I seek that forgiveness with an apology, and I receive that, and the relationship stays intact, again, it's this huge, overwhelming burden that's lifted off. Forgiveness is so very powerful, but yet it can be so hard for us to extend one to the other. And for Peter, This was one of his questions, as Jesus had been talking about forgiveness and about what it meant to sin and all kinds of different things. Peter took Jesus aside and said, Lord, how many times, like how many is good? Now for me, if I were in Peter's shoes, that would not have been my question. My question would be, Lord, I understand that I needed to forgive, but do I need to forgive everything? Like, aren't there certain things in the world that we shouldn't forgive? What are those things? I want you to hear my question to Jesus. My question is, what can I hold against someone else? When is it okay not to release someone of their debt? How often can I hold it over them? Because there are times 
when I feel like I want justice to come, and sometimes justice is just in the disguise of vengeance. So Jesus tells this story of a king who's ready to go through all his debts, and he's calling his slaves one by one to hold an accounting. And this first slave, he must be starting at the very top of who owes him the most. Because this slave, even though 10,000 denarii doesn't sound like a whole lot to our ears, in today's money, in today's market, that would be $1.5 billion. Whoa. So I have a couple of questions about that as well. What did this slave do to accrue that much debt? And what is it about this king that allowed this slave to accrue that much debt? Because it says a whole lot, not just about the slave, but also about the king. And as we enter into the king's throne room, and we watch the slave hear the amount of his debt, knowing full well that he would never be able to pay this back. Not in a hundred thousand years at this slave's wage would he be able to pay this debt back. It is an impossible debt. And the king has announced that even though he will never accrue this amount back, he will sell that slave, he will sell his wife, his children, and everything the slave owns, and just cut his losses. But the slave pleads with the king, please have mercy. I will pay you everything. The slave promises the impossible. The king hears the impossible. But for some reason, the king finds so much grace in his heart that he wipes out this impossible debt. All of it. And the slave is allowed to leave free of all debt. Talk about lightning, lightning a load off your shoulders. Because it's not just about him, it's about his family, about his household. And instead of going out in the streets rejoicing, he sees another co-slave who owes him money, a hundred denarii. Today it would be like $3,000. And instead of rejoicing and being so grateful of the gift that he just received, an impossible gift, he goes over to this other slave and is violent and accusatory and says, pay me what you owe. And notice the slave says the very same words, have mercy on me, I will pay you everything. But he doesn't have any mercy in his heart. Instead, because this person can't pay him, he throws him in jail. (laughs) Well, it isn't done in secret. Eyes were all upon him. And word got back to the king what had happened. The king is upset because what he had given had been taken for granted. I don't know what was going through the slave's mind. Did he just think that he got away with something? That it wasn't about forgiveness? but that he actually pulled one over on the king? But whatever it is, that grace, that huge amount of forgiveness, didn't pierce his heart. When we think about forgiveness in our own lives, it goes in different levels. There's those small things, those little quirksy things. when you're hanging out with a person and they have these little idiosyncrasies that get on your nerves. 
And you let it go, and you let it go, and you let it go. Until finally you kind of start pulling away from the relationship because you just can't forgive those idiosyncrasies. Or think of it this way. You've made a lunch date with a friend. That friend gets busy for whatever reason, and you are at that restaurant waiting. And you've told the wait staff, my friend is coming. And you can feel that little anxiety like, oh my gosh, I'm at this restaurant by myself. I've been stood up. And your friend calls later that day with a great apology. They're your friend. Of course you forgive them. Of course you give them another chance. Of course you make another lunch date. But what if it happens again and again and again? What about those things that pain us to our core? What about drug dealers that target our children? What about those who are violent within their household attacking their spouse and their children? What about those who you feel are just wasting their life? Or even those that are kidnapping children? See, these are the things that I ask God about. What exactly is forgivable? Now, Peter stayed on the safe side. He asked about people in the church. Now, we can say no one like that is in our church. Maybe so. But if forgiveness can't start in the church, if we can't forgive our brothers and sisters, we're certainly going to have problems forgiving out in the world. What amazes me about this king is that he allows the slave to accrue so much debt. This is where the rubber hits the road for me. This is where I find myself in the story. It's grace upon grace upon grace that we can't ever go too far and God's grace can't reach us to the very depths of the hell that we create for ourselves, God can even reach us there. People get caught up at the end of the story where the king is so angry that the slave receives what seems to be this eternal punishment. But what I've found about forgiveness is when we don't forgive, we can create our own hell. We get tied up and caught up in our own desires, maybe for vengeance, caught up in our own anger and our own bitterness, waiting for an amends or an apology. The gospel tells us Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. What amazes me is forgiveness comes first. It's the very first thing in our redemption that God decides to forgive. God decides God wants to be in relationship before we're even ready for a relationship. It's, forgiveness is not the complete redemption of who we are. It is the first step to realize that we are so loved no matter what, and that we are to go out into the world to share that grace with everyone else. I wonder, what is forgiveness like in your life? What's holding you back? Forgiveness is hard. It's something that I have wrestled with on and off all of my life. And every time I reach a hurdle and I find forgiveness, or I am able to give forgiveness, it's a game changer for me. The more I am able to forgive, the more joy I am able to receive. And I find a little bit more of the kingdom of God. Jesus was very passionate about forgiveness, and he talked about forgiveness a lot. In fact, forgiveness is interwoven 
into our, our prayer that Jesus taught us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That there is this forgiveness that is woven into our relationship with God. With this expectation that it's something that we'll work on. For your homework this week, I want you to think about the Lord's Prayer and think about when you pray that, what that means for you. I want you to think deep down on those times that you've been forgiven, not just by God, but by the people around you that you love, that love you so much that even when you make mistakes, they still want to be in relationship with you and how good that makes you feel. But I also want you to think about the hard things, about the circumstances and the people that you have not forgiven. I want you to think about the weight, to analyze your own thoughts and feelings of what's going on in your own heart when you think about those circumstances and you think about those people and what it would mean to forgive them. We look through all of these scriptures in the Gospel of Matthew through the image of the cross, that it's our lens, that we're walking in its shadow. In the Gospel of Luke, we see Jesus on the cross and one of his last phrases is, Lord God, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. That is truly our story. A lot of times when we fall short and we sin and we are disobedient, a lot of times we may or may not know what we're doing. We certainly don't understand the ramifications. And it's the same when others sin against us. And I will tell you this about my question to Jesus when I ask, what sin is too great that it can't be forgiven? And I find that answer on the cross. I see the man suffering with the stripes upon his back and the blood trickling down his body and his face and the crown of thorns. I look at the crowds and their animosity, that it's not enough that he's dying on that cross, that they have to be antagonistic and say ugly things and curse him and spit at him, that there is no compassion whatsoever. And Jesus looks down on that crowd and can say, Father, forgive them. And I find that there is no sin that is too great for the compassion of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
joy's gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, this joy comes in the morning. I'm treating my sorrow. I'm treating my As we close our worship today, I just want to say how awesome the friends and family of St. John's are. You guys have really come together, as you've heard from Cindy, the supplies that you have brought in relief to um, Orange, and later on we will bring, be bringing to Louisiana, but also the $1,000 that was donated to 4B for a house um, that will have new drywall put in because of your generosity, and a family will be able to get back into their home after however many years after Harvey. Is it three? Three years? That's amazing. I want you guys to know that even though we are not meeting in the sanctuary, we are doing some awesome things as the body of Christ. So thank you. I am so proud to be your pastor. As we close this worship, may the peace of Christ be upon your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. May you bring the Spirit of God wherever you go, so that all may meet Christ in you, and you bring the kingdom of God wherever you go. Amen. or anything, are you? Not as far, oh, okay. not as, far I, as you know. I, yeah, isn't this great? The, the gym shorts and dress shoes. I feel very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> okay, are we ready?